So this is the full review of the Drift Ghost XL. I'm going to preface this by saying I'm not a professional reviewer. I have no real decent kit to do it. I'm literally filming this on a Moto G5 S Plus. I don't even have a tripod, so it's I'm doing it by hand. Uh, I've written some notes, so I'll start off with Drift customer service. Um, it's generally okay. Uh, if you need to talk to them, I would not recommend you message them on Facebook because they can take a while to reply that way. Instead, if you send a, a ticket out on their website, they can reply anywhere from within a couple of hours to like three or four days or sometimes never. <laughs> um, so it can be really hit and miss. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about is mounting the camera on the helmet and some of the issues that might arise. So if you've had a drift camera before, you'll know how this works. If not, I'll quickly show you. So you get one of these curved mounts with the camera. You see here it's curved slightly um, and that has double sided 3M foam on it, which is very strong. It's pretty much like glue um, and the camera just slides, slides into it. Uh, here's where some issues may arise. So if I show you my helmet, it's a modular flip front one. Um, let's close it up. So that's my helmet, and I found that um, obviously being a flip front, I can't stick the mount anywhere here, because when I ride with the um, flip open, the camera's just going to be pointing at the sky, so that's useless. Uh, so if I grab that mount, right, let's see if I can show. If you see here, Oh, it's not going to show up. Yeah, there you go. If you look under there, there's a massive gap. And that's simply because the um, the curve on my helmet is nowhere near as curved as the actual mount. So if I stuck that down, it's going to just fly off. Um, the only place I could find where it would stick quite well is right toward the back here. But even that is not great, is it? So what I had to do, and what you may need to do if you have a flip front helmet or a helmet with an odd design, um, I basically peeled the um, pad of 3M foam that it came with uh, and bought my own. It's, it's cheap, you can get it on eBay, just make sure it's legit 3M stuff. And I did one full layer, basically I, I stuck two bits of um, 3M tape on the mount, then got a uh, standing knife and cut round it to make sure it's uniform but like my helmet has an odd design so it sort of dips in here and dips out again and it's not it's not like a uniform curve so as you can see I had to put two layers on these sides and one down here but um that said I can literally lift the helmet up by the mount and it's it ain't going nowhere um, and I'm perfectly happy with that. I don't think there'll ever be an issue. So that's just something to bear in mind. Um, what I will say is Drift, if, if you do see this video, I've mentioned it in the um, video uh, quality test of the camera. It would be great if you could release a chin mount, you know, like what you can get for a GoPro, where you basically have an arm, which 3M sticks here, and then the arm sort of comes out and in front and then the camera can be mounted in front here, so you get a, a better view. Again, with a modular helmet, it's not ideal, because if you flip this up, um, the camera will be pointing at the sky, but, you know, it's it's still... I'd buy one if you did sell a chin, a chin mount, I would buy it and just make do, sort of leave this shut, um, just to get a better angle, because then you're right in the middle of, like, where you're riding, so you'd see your left and right hands turn in the bars, like completely in the middle, if that makes sense. It's not a big deal, really. Um, I'm sure you could probably make your own mount. In fact, I bought this cheap one on eBay. Here, look, um, which I might try and figure out a way to sort of Frankenstein the drift mount to this mount. As you can see, this comes with 3M 
foam here so you just stick that that goes on the front of the helmet and then the arm clicks in but this end here is obviously no good for a drift mount it it, it ain't gonna work so i'd have to come up with some sort of homemade piece that goes in here and then somehow get the, the drift mount to stick to it so yeah it's not ideal um <clears throat> if you've seen the uh youtube video i did with the um uh like the video of the camera in different modes like 1080p 30 hdr 720p do not take much notice of that video um the reason being is I did it on Windows Movie Maker, the standard edition, and I could only save the file in 720p 30, I think it's in, or it might be 720p 60, I'm not sure. Um, and on top of that, uh, Windows Movie Maker compresses the video, it drops the bitrate, and on top of that even, when you upload it to YouTube, YouTube uh, lowers the bitrate even more, so you end up with a really inaccurate representation of the actual quality you get from the camera um so yeah don't take too much notice of of that video it's more just to show rough very very roughly how the camera performs but i will tell you that the raw files on my laptop look far 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 superior to what is shown on youtube what i will say um if you've heard of a guy called techmon t-e-c-h-m-o-a-n on uh, YouTube, type in Techmoan Drift Ghost X Review because the video quality on this is identical to the, the Drift Ghost X in my opinion because I used to have the X for a little while um, and I really can't tell a difference. They're as good as each other and Techmoan is more of a pro than me at um, showing the different uh, like video settings and I think he he can upload in like a higher definition and frame rate and stuff. So yeah. Um, comparing this with the Ghost X then, I've mentioned some of these things already. Uh, the, let me just get this off. The microphone, sorry, the speaker is much louder on this one, which I like. You can hear it even with earplugs in um, and your helmet on. It has the vibrate function where when you press a button you can hear it well you can feel it vibrate Let's see if i can demonstrate that um hopefully you can hear that it's a very subtle vibration but you can feel it um against your ear like when this is stuck to the helmet you can feel it vibrate through the helmet so it's really nice that you get some sensory feedback um not just like audio like a beep you also can feel it so you know it's a lot more tactile basically you know when you press the button when you're riding or not um another difference to the x is you have the wi-fi symbol which i mentioned in the unboxing um the whole the buttons themselves feel a bit more rubbery in fact the whole device feels a bit more rubbery uh, you have the built-in battery, which the X is a clip-on one. Um, obviously, you have this watertight threaded 3.5mm jack. Another thing I love is this. Gone are those stupid two little rubber bungs on the X that you really you have to like push in and just hope that they keep the water out because they did not look up to much, in my opinion. This, you literally just pull that open exposing the data transfer um port the reset port and the uh, micro sd and it's simple when you're done there it's on <laughs> can't really go wrong with that um other differences to the x i it, i might be wrong in saying this but i feel like the menu is a little bit quicker um and i feel like the wi-fi turns on a tiny bit quicker as well but i'm not sure if that it, it might just be sort of placebo, but there's not much in it anyway. The 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 um, menu itself and uh, how it performs is very similar to the X. I'm not going to go through the menu and the settings because you could find that on like Techmoan's um, review of the X because they're pretty much identical. 
Um, another difference is this has a gyro sort of sensor in it, which apparently if you crash or um, if this sort of like suddenly banged into something, it will automatically save the video file and it won't overwrite it. Um, only if it, I think I'm 90% sure it's only if it's in dash cam mode. If you're just filming like a normal video and you dropped it or something, I don't think it will kick in and save the file. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's just in dash cam mode. Um, what else to mention? I think that's pretty much it when comparing to the X. So I'll just move on to the next bit. Uh, so I've written here video performance. Again, not much to say. It's very similar to the Drift Ghost X. So if you've, again, watched Techmoan's video, in my opinion, the, the uh, quality is very good, both in 720p60 and 1080p30. It could do with image stabilization, but like I said in my uh, video footage um, thing, uh, you'd have to pay so much more to get any kind of decent built-in video stabilization. Uh, this is good enough to read like car registration plates in 1080p, 30, and even in 72060. Um, so yeah, not not an issue for me. Uh, then I've written here menu navigation. <laughs> Again, there's not really a lot to say. It's pretty much identical to the X. App performance, you can get the Drift Life app, which, um, oh, I did forget, comparing this to the X, this has Bluetooth connectivity, the X does not, so that's another thing to bear in mind. And also, you can set this to shoot one second videos, so they're saved as MP, I think they're MP4 videos, you can set it for like half a second, one second, two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, or 30 seconds, I think. Something like that. You can't do that on the X. So that would be good to do like a time lapse. If instead of pictures, you'd rather have video files, it has that function, whereas the X does not. Um, so yeah, app performance, the Drift Life app, I had no issues connecting to my phone, which is an Android uh, Moto G5 S Plus work just fine. I've not even tried the Bluetooth because I tend to just use Wi-Fi, but there's a little bit of lag between the app, like what the um like the preview picture on the app, what that sees compared to how quickly you're moving the camera. I'd say it's about three quarters of a second, something like that. Uh, next is glitches. Not found any glitches yet apart from one. Whenever you film in 1080p 30 and have the date stamp on the video, the date stamp is blurry. Um, if you look on my channel, I've got like a five second video demonstrating that where the date should be like here on the video, but it's it's just like squiggly white lines. I told Drift about this and they replied pretty quickly saying, yeah, another customer has um, mentioned this and we're working on a f uh, firmware update to fix it. So if your camera does that, don't swap the camera because your new one's gonna be just the same. We just have to wait for a new firmware update. Um, so what next? Ah, I guess I'll just go to the bad points, right. Um, the main bad point I have, which I tried to show in my demonstration of the the different video settings but i couldn't really show you properly because i was doing it in the mirror of my motorbike so here's my helmet inside the left cheek pad is a microphone a cheap ebay one which is behind here sorry it's um no yeah it, it is it's behind here it's uh it goes around here and then it, there's a bunch of wire behind this. Then it comes through here, out here, and there's the standard 3.5mm um, jack for the microphone. With drift, you get one of these um, with the camera. That plugs into there. That, you see the little O-ring, so it's watertight. That plugs in and then screws into there. Now the issue is, I'm not, I won't screw it in, I'll just plug it in. Um, 
when that's clipped on there like so, I won't clip it in because I've only got one hand so I won't be able to get it out again. If you can see, that's what it looks like, roughly. Oh. It looks a little something like that. Now, the issue is, um, when you're riding, your shoulder or your jacket is going to knock that. And um, over time, in my opinion, that's going to break down because it's always got stress on it. It's always going to, not always, but when you're looking around to do your lifesavers or, or things like that, um, or just if you crank your neck a little bit too much, your shoulder's going to bang into this, which probably won't damage the camera, but it, it will damage this joint here. Drift, you, you should really release a right-angled cable. The, um, the Drift Ghost X had the exact same issue where it would get um, audio from the mini USB port. Um, and the mini USB mic adapter stuck out just the same as this. So you, you just bang it with your shoulder all the time. This needs to be right angled so, you, so it'd come out like a centimeter and then the cable just sticks out this way. That way, like if you, even if your shoulder bangs it, it's not going to damage the actual cable. But this, as soon as you bang it, it's right on the, the uh, wire joint. And like I said, that's the main, main bad point for me, because that means you have to keep buying replacement cables from Drift, which leads me on to a little experiment I did. Um, this is an aftermarket waterproof 3.5 mil adapter jack, just the same as this. I bought this on eBay for £3, and long story short, it doesn't work. <laughs> I managed to sort of get it to work, but I'll show you why I think it doesn't. If you look at the cable, the um, jacks themselves, they're very, very slightly different. With the, um, you see the thread pitch, there's more thread on this one than that one. I can get this to work if I screw it in, but don't screw it in all the way. I also had to remove the watertight o-ring, which came with this aftermarket one. So it's a no-go. You can't really use this. Um, that was a bit of a waste of time, uh, which is a shame because this one, believe it or not, is actually better built than the one you get with Drift. The wire is thicker. It feels like it's less likely to bend. The, um, the actual microphone cable itself clicks in a lot firmer with this one, like it really snaps into place and it's difficult to remove because it's such a tight connection. This just feels cheaper. <coughs> but... Um, this one, it does work fine, but again, I'm, I'm going to have to look around for a, an aftermarket cable identical to this, which um, I can buy when this eventually fails, which it will do when much, when the, um, the joint in this cable breaks. So Drift, if you could let me know who your supplier is for this cable so I can buy the exact same one. Um, I'd happily buy like three or four of them if they're cheap, like two, three pounds. Um, cause it's not a deal breaker for me. So it's, it's a bit annoying, but again, it's not the end of the world. Um, other bad points, honestly, um, I'm really struggling to think of any, uh, apart from that date stamp issue, which I mentioned earlier, but again, the firmware is probably going to sort that out. Um, and that's about it. Uh, I'll leave some more comments in, in the, um, the comments section of this video if I think of any more bad points. And you have to bear in mind I've only owned this camera and only tested it really for like one day. So this is by no means a long term review or I don't even know how it copes in wet weather. Because this is supposedly waterproof to one meter. <clears throat> if you want it to be more waterproof than that. I'm sure if they don't already have one, you can buy a um, like a, a case, like a see-through case, so you can go diving with it or whatever. So I don't even know how this performs in the rain, but I trust it. I can't see anywhere obvious where water would get in. And with this, with the little O-ring and how that screws right up inside it, um, I can't see that being an issue either. And obviously this is completely safe and in my opinion is way more 
it's a way better design than the Drift Ghost X, which had those stupid little rubber flaps, which over time would just pop open or they wouldn't seal very well at all. So, yeah, hope this helps. Again, any questions you might have, I'm happy to answer. I can confirm as well, by the way, that that memory card I showed in the unboxing video, I could record in 1080p 30 high bit rate and the videos just worked properly. It, the camera didn't cut the video off as if it was struggling to, to keep up with the, um, the right speed sort of thing. It, was, it just works fine. So yeah, top tip there, make sure you get a 60 megabits per second right speed micro SD card any lower than that and you risk it not being able to um, uh, keep up and essentially you'll have loads of small video files of varying lengths. Um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Uh, hopefully this helps. Um, one last feature, I'll quickly throw it in. I wasn't going to bother, but I will do. Um, in the unboxing video, I showed that it comes with a cable which looks like this on one end and is a standard USB cable on the other end. It looks to be about two meters. Um, that's another way, that's another thing which diff makes this differ from the Drift Ghost X because it allows you to plug this end in and you can connect to the USB to something like this, which is just a power bank, 10,000 milliamp. So you plug that in there and you can essentially record and charge at the same time for absolutely hours. It already has an eight hour built in battery. With something like this, you're probably going to get like 24 hours, if not more, of constant recording. And the best thing about it is um, it's watertight as well. So obviously you'd have to keep that in your pocket or something but the actual plug-in bit here is completely watertight so you can <coughs> comfortably charge the camera as you're riding in the rain so yeah i hope this helps